Hi, everybody, and welcome to TNN Coaching Unplugged and Zoran Todorovic Interconnected Podcast. We're so grateful and happy and delighted that you are with us once again today, that you're tuning in into this podcast that is set up to grow you both personally and professionally. And today we're going to be focusing on that exactly, growing you personally and going you professionally. I'm your host, Zoran Todorovic. Uh, I'm, I'm once again grateful to have you with us today. And uh, our topic, which is a very interesting one, especially for professional coaches, for HR executives, for learning and development managers, for people managers, for anybody who is within this growing people, developing people business, and anybody who really wants to create impactful learning uh, programs, somebody who really values the importance of instructional designs, somebody who really thinks about principles and practices of effective delivery, and people who are also passionate about coaching and understanding how coaching links into that story, how coaching can support all the learners to dive deeper into these transformational experiences, and then eventually for learning to, to be able to integrate, to be able to really embody with the participants. So if you're curious about that powerful learning process, process. Today, we're going to discuss parallels and principles for effective instructional design, delivery, and coaching. And uh, we believe, you know, together, Christopher and I, that this is critical for creating transformational learning experiences. And this is critical for asking good quality questions to create this meaningful transformational learning for the participants. So Chris Haynes, uh, it's a seasoned professional with extensive experience in instructional design and coaching. His expertise lies in developing effective interactive learning solutions and learning strategies that are fostering transformational growth for the employees. He's also coach, trainer, facilitator, and you can read a lot about his uh, background on his LinkedIn profile that I'm going to be referencing in the description of this podcast. Uh, and then without further ado, let's dive into this conversation. Chris, welcome. How are you feeling today? Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm feeling great. And how are you yeah. today? I am really, really feeling good. This is one of the last podcasts I'm recording before my summer vacation. So, you know, this week you and I piloted LinkedIn, you know, live, and now we're yes. creating a wonderful podcast for the end of my season, so to say. So I'm really feeling blessed and and grateful, really energized to be with you today. Yes, me as well. Thank you. So this is this is an interesting, you know, topic. When I, I was thinking about it, you know, I really love, you know, uh, creating transformational learning experiences. You know, when the learning is really there. So I would love to start by asking you a few questions about your background and about your journey into instructional design and coaching. How did you get into that, and what really got you to become passionate about it? Yeah, it's been probably about 25 years, you know, uh, since I got that that bug, that itch, if you will. You know, over that time, I've I've worn all the hats in terms of designing instruction, delivering instruction, uh, and coaching. And you know, it really all started back in my undergraduate college years, where I had the the honor and privilege to be elected and serve as a leader and president of of several different student organizations and including the president of the Student Government Association of my college. And with that, um, I had the opportunity to attend many different workshops and, and programs and conferences. And, you know, I had some successes and I had some failures and I was really inspired to like, hey, how can I get better? You know, wh why am I not doing well? Why are people, you know, listening? You know, I think this makes sense, this vision, these goals, you know, people aren't following through or I'm failing in some way. And so as I, I, I was inspired, I've always had this kind of calling, if you will, will to kind of serve others and lead others in some way. And I, you know, it took me a while to figure, okay, well, what, what career is that? Um, and, and I went in a few different directions and now I'm very happy to be really laser focused on that. Um, mm -hmm. but over that time, you know, I, I saw opportunities to educate myself and, and get more experience in designing and delivering and, and coaching. Um, I went on to get some formal education, a master's of education to really study intensely the, the, the learning science, the, the research about that. And really all of that kind of summarize that is what I'm talking about today is kind of just simplifying 
all of my education, all of my experiences, all of the mm-hmm. success, failures, whatever, distilling it down into if I had to kind of in an hour or less um, impart that to others to hopefully help others get further faster than I was able to do, you know, again, it's 25 mm-hmm. years. Um, what would that look like? And so I'm really looking forward to talk through that today with you. Yeah. Exactly. So let's dive into that. Let's start with that, you know, this parallels between instructional design, delivery and coaching, because I love that you're bringing that bridge, you know, between instructional design, you know, how do we create meaningful learning experiences? How do we deliver them? And then how do we link coaching? So a lot of the people are familiar with the concept of instructional design, but I just would love to do this just for the sake of the learning for the younger audience or people who are, I know are following our podcast because they want to learn from the experts and masters. So how would you define instructional design and what are the key elements of that and why is it so important nowadays? Yeah, I think you know, a common terminology is in instructional systems design, um, a, a common uh, acronym that a lot of uh, learning professionals and instructional designers use is, is ADDIE, A-D-D-I-E. And um, you'll see how this kind of uh, equates to uh, a systematic approach to, to coaching as well later. But the A is analyze. The first D is to design. The second D is to develop. The I is to implement. And the E is to evaluate. So it's really, again, about an intentional systematic approach to designing an instruction. And it sounds complicated. It doesn't have to be. I think a lot of people feel that maybe, oh, if I go through that intentional systematic approach, it'll, it'll take too much time. It'll, it'll take too much money to deliver that. Why, why can't I just kind of throw some content together and publish it in some format? And yeah, you could do that, but will you be as effective? Will you be successful and or more likely to achieve success in that facilitating transformational learning? Um, so I think really what, what I want to focus on today and what I've learned is that you can be intentional uh, and it doesn't have to mean you spend a whole lot of extra time and money with that. Honestly, if you do it right the first time, it's better than, than not. Sometimes it takes more time and money to go back and fix something um, mm-hmm. if you don't do it right the first time. Yeah. So you're saying it's much more important to invest time and energy to do it right first time than to just improvise because I, you know, I've, I'm guilty as charged. I can share this, you know, and in my delivery teams and development teams, sometimes we just rock and pull things together and create the content with the hope that content is going to be insightful and impactful, especially if you feel uh, passionate about it. And what you're saying to us and to the listeners, it's much better to follow those principles to really create more of the foundation so that the design in itself can deliver the outcome, correct? Exactly. And in, in, we talked about this the other day uh, about, you know, so what, now what? It, mm-hmm. it doesn't, if, if you really want to just do kind of call it the bare minimum, um, just asking yourself a few questions up front mm-hmm. and throughout the process at, and you know, facilitating asking questions of your audience and learners, and you can turn pretty much anything into a a learning experience, and then hopefully facilitate a transformational learning experience. Even if that's you know just a, a blog or or a podcast mm-hmm. like we're doing today, or or anything. Mm-hmm. We're we're not saying everything has to be this perfect blended learning opportunity with, you know, pre and post and setup and all this stuff. I mean, from a learning science standpoint, you know, that's kind of the ideal structure is some type of blended learning experience. Um, but th- that doesn't have to be it. You, you can, again, facilitate transformational learning just by asking some questions. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to jump into something and come back because you inspired me with your sharing. So when it comes to learning science, you know, I'm super passionate in TNM coaching and I know all our facilitators and people who in a collaboration with uh, our ability to deliver the content that people can really absorb and they can learn and the content that people can integrate and then do something with it instead of just being and learning certain information model principle that never gets applied or never gets really embedded within the business so 
from the point of view of, of scientific uh, learning approaches, what do we need? What do we need as human, grown-up humans yes. living and working with the organizations to be able to learn? Yeah, that's the key. I'm glad you said grown-up humans, right? Because there, there mm -hmm. is a difference between, uh, you know, K through 12 uh, yeah. type of pedagogy, as they call it, in, in adult learning. You know, there's a guy named Malcolm Knowles, very famous in the adult learning theory world. Adults are different. You know, they have, they've had a lot of life experiences and you, you have to tap into that. You have to facilitate that, those adults really thinking critically and reflecting on their past experiences and, and how those relate to what they're learning now and what's the difference and, and what are they going to do differently moving forward? And the other thing uh, that I think is really key, there, there's all kinds of, um, of principles related to adult learning theory. We're not going to get into them today. But an, another one that I think is extremely important is that adults are more problem-centered than, than um, content-oriented. And we have to focus on what is the problem we're trying to solve here? Why is that important? Why is an important question. How does that relate to, to them and where they are right now, where they want to be? And not just focus on the content. I think all too often, um, and, and this is, you know, giving the benefit of doubt to instructional designers, especially a lot of time, you know, we, they are just told to develop some content. Okay. They've got to publish, they got to get it done now. All right. And, and, and sometimes that could be more of a kind of check the box, earn a badge, whatever. And that's not what's important to adults. So they're trying to solve a problem. So it doesn't necessarily matter how awesome that content is, even if it's like, you know, uh, Hollywood level video production. <laughs> that doesn't matter if you're yeah. not focused on the problem that that, no. that person is trying to solve. So that that's one thing. And then again, just that that facilitating the reflection, okay, asking those why questions, the so what now what that we talked about. And again, it's just, okay, what did you learn? Why is it important? What are you going to do about it? How? How are you going to hold yourself accountable? So that's kind of the essence if you put it in together. And then the other thing from an adult or your learning science standpoint, it's, it's about practice, okay? People have to be challenged. Okay, that's important. It can't be easy practice. You learn from from challenges, experiences, failures. So don't be afraid to to design challenging activities for people to go through, and then provide them specific and directive feedback on how they performed and that reflection. Okay, how did I perform? You know, how can I do better? What am I going to do differently next time? And then try again over time. That that kind of spaced repetition is important as well. And keep practicing. Ideally, you want to be um, offering some type of safe space for them to practice instead of a quote unquote live environment. Um, from a coaching standpoint, even a training standpoint, that can be kind of like role plays before they go out and try something new and different with their boss, or they go into a live technical environment that they don't want to crash the whole network. Um, so, yeah, so some type of safe space is important as well. Yeah. And those micro mo moments, micro learning, I love that you're asking those questions. And that gets me into the next uh, question that I have for you, that sometimes coaching is seen as a separate from the instructional design and coaching is somehow disconnected. I know that you have passion for both, you know, for creating meaningful learning experiences and then for coaching. So how would you define coaching in this context and what is the connection between coaching and uh, the design and delivery of the learning initiatives. Yeah, I think if you truly want to deliver, again, the transformational learning experience, which we were saying a lot, or just call it like a holistic learning experience, mm -hmm. um, if you're really expecting results, if you're expecting um, application of learning and, and, and results, you have to have something, someone on the back end of any type of formal or even informal training opportunity to help with that learning transfer and application. Um, and, and that's where coaching, I, I think it's all together. It's not design, deliver, it's coaching. It's these three things are part of the greater whole. Okay. And that's, I've been fortunate through my time where that's what I've been doing for forever. 
and it, it mm-hmm. it's just been natural to me at this point. But I've come across so many people that are just one of the three, mm-hmm. at least in title, um, or maybe two of the three. Um, but to me, it's like you need three of the three if that's right. if you want to be successful. Okay, right. and and the, the great thing about coaching is that even if you are quote unquote just coaching. To me, that's like the the best part if you could only do one, okay? Because you've got this this content or the experience or whatever that someone is coming to you with. And your job as a coach, you have the honor and privilege of helping them get to where their re- their ultimate goal was in that training and facilitating that the application of what they were learning and the results that they want to achieve. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. And that sustainability of learning, it's super important because in my experience, some of our clients that I've been working in the past with, you know, they go into the design, they go into the delivery, and as you said, the drop coaching, so the integration, the application get gets not that strong, or they just offer coaching and they don't consider the whole learning journey from the beginning, middle, and end. So you're saying to the listeners, especially for the people who are passionate about learning and development that we need to have all three together, design delivery coaching, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if your goal, you know, as learning professionals, every learning professional I've ever interacted with, that's what they want. And that's what they care about. They're not mm-hmm. always given the time, the resources to deliver that. But again, I'm saying that you, you can, you can still achieve that on, mm-hmm. on some level if, if you go through this process and, and really push hard, I think, for that back end, because it's not enough just to complete a, some type of training or uh, earn a badge or, or whatever. In the end, you know, there's research out there, um, the Association for Talent Development or, or, or um, talentdevelopment.org, uh, you know, they, they have all kinds of surveys of CEOs and people who are, you know, paying for training, like, oh, hey, we want results. We, you know, we want people to apply. We want results. We want the top end, if you're evaluating learning, you know, the level three and four Kirkpatrick, we want that, we want to see application and results. And mm-hmm. so, okay, then, all right, we need to actually design, deliver, implement what it takes. And that's where it's ongoing support and, and coaching and the opportunities to support people. And so I think that's important to, uh, when you're making the case for investing in, in training and learning, that's part of it, is that if you really want the application and results, if you want that return on investment, mm-hmm. this is what it's going to take. So I always ask one challenging question from my life <laughs> to each and every guest who comes to this podcast, you know, and as you were saying this, you know, I could hear some of the conversation I had actually this week with, uh, with one of the organization and they will come and say, we love what you're saying. We are hundred percent with you and we don't have budget. So the money becomes an issue. So if you are, for example, faced with that, or let's say that somebody from our listeners believes or feels this is exactly how they need to go along, but then they face these budgetary restrictions, limitations, so the full-blown learning solution, so to say, cannot be offered, like we need to compromise. What would you say to that? Yes, that's a challenging question, right? And, you know, what would I say if, if directly to a client versus what do I say to myself, right? I'm like, ah. let's, let's hear both. Like, let's say what we're just saying the, client, like, the clients are listening. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, I think when I've had those conversations with, with directly with clients or through salespeople that I've interacted with, I know clients, they get it. Okay. They want it too. And I know it's, it's frustrating for them sometimes as it is for us. It's like, I want this. I understand you're making perfect sense, but we just don't have the budget. Okay. And I said, okay, well then what are some other ways maybe that, that we can work together in the future, or you can implement some of these things on your own. Okay. Cause I think it can't just be like, okay, fine. We'll just deliver the training and, you know, uh, done check mark. Like it, people who are passionate, who really care again about the application and results, there's, there can be a way to help facilitate that. So if they're not willing or able to 
um, uh, invest in ongoing support from an external source or coaching. There, there's mechanisms that can be in place where just put it on the, those managers, okay, and and put it on the, the the learners. You can set up again. There's questions. There, you can have a development plan, and it doesn't have to be a lot of extra work for that person's manager or the manager manager whoever the HR L and D person. We're not saying okay. You're going to be spending hours per week per individual um, instead of having a coach do it. No. Again, there's there's questions and just help make sure those questions are being asked and answered by the right people and you can get there. Okay. Now, that being said, obviously, the best case is to having some more formal structure going on and having ongoing coaching. Right. But there is a way. It can't. It, it's not black and white. It can't mm -hmm. just be, okay, fine, we'll just deliver training and 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 that's the end of it. You have to focus on learning transfer uh, and application because again, you want to return on investment. Uh, exactly. Like how else results. are you going to measure that? Of course, of course. And you know that's why you know I'm just asking this question to empower our audience because I'm with you. I know that some of the clients that you and I are working with in organizations they do get it, and 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 it's they're always like we want that BMW, so to say, or Maserati of the learning. But we need to kind of compromise and buy the cheaper car, so to say. But the good thing here, Chris, is there is always a way. And we do need to focus on results and return on investment. And we need to find a creative way to embody or embed the learning that people go through. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's shift the gears a little bit more because I also know that you are passionate about transformational learning experience. And, you know, I just want to kind of go into the beyond jar jargon into the essence of this, because sometimes, you know, we would say to people, you know, we need to create transformational learning experience. So what is it? You know, when, when we talk to clients and to prospective learners, what defines the transformational learning experience and why is it so important? And what do people need to go through to achieve that level of transformation that is necessary? Yeah, I, I think it could probably be explained, you know, as alluding earlier about learning in the form of completion and badges and certificates mm -hmm. and things like that versus true growth, like g getting to some higher level of not just knowledge, but uh, ability and, and even belief. Okay. So it's, 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 it's becoming both competent in an area and confident. And I think you know, we, we want people to be really good in completing work and tasks. Um, and I think beyond that, where transformation is, is that they're doing that um, in, in an inspired, intentional way, where that's where quality comes out and innovation and, and, and continuous improvement. So not mm -hmm. just checking the box, completing the task. You, this is becomes a part of, of who you are and, and, and why you are and what you do, how you do it. That's transformation, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love your definition. So beautiful because also you brought the elements of feeling competent, feeling confident, continuous improvement, really kind of getting into the learning for the sake of learning instead of just ticking the boxes. And sometimes we have this twisted relationship with the education because we all train to learn in a certain way. You know, we all train to pass the exam, to get the certificate, to tick the box, to get the score, to go into the completion. You know, a little bit of that is always present. When what you're saying, the true transformational experience, it's a, it's a growth, it's evolution, that you really feel that you achieved a different state or stage in your competence and your confidence around your current uh, knowledge, right? Yes. And, and I think I'm not trying to say that everything mm -hmm. we all design and deliver has to be transformation. Okay. Mm -hmm. There, there is, tr and there is a need for call it, check the box completion type mm -hmm. training. Okay. And there's people who, who do that type of work and it is needed. Okay. So mm -hmm. like a uh, driver's test. Okay. I've got a daughter who's okay. got to pass her driver's test here in a, in a couple days. All right. Not looking for somebody to design and, and, deliver some type of transformational experience. Like sometimes you just got to complete something because you need to do that. 
And that is important and needed in this world as well. But I think that's part of the question we need to ask. All right, is mm-hmm. this appropriate to, to set it up for some type of transformation or is it a kind of normal or needed necessary type of training? There's both in this world. Both are good. Again, my passion is more on the transformational side. Yeah, mine too, but I, I, I'm with you. You know, one, sometimes we just need ticking the boxes and go to the assessments and scoring and everything. What I was you know, also saying to some of our listeners that, you know, the mindset of the learner, if we get into the point of view that we do seek for transformation, that we do seek for transcendent evolution, then the learning can get a little bit more exciting. Yeah. Because we, you know, especially in our professional lives, we beyond, you know, our traditional form of learning and then basically the learning that we need right now, it's actually to empower us to create results, to achieve certain uh, measurable results, to increase our competence, you know, upskilling nowadays. It's so important, right? You know, one of the uh, core categories for all of the organizations and core KPIs for the teams in 2024 and 2025 is to upskill the, the employees because we are through the rapid development of the technology, we are facing that challenge that people need to go to the next level of themselves. So I think the transformational learning, which is well-designed, well-delivered, well-coached, will become even more important than ever before. Absolutely. So, you know, coming closer to, towards the end of our conversation today, you know, we, we come, I come from a coaching background. I know that you love coaching as well, and, and we both love transformational learning. So, you know, I would love to talk to you about the importance of asking questions. We covered a little bit of our LinkedIn live for the audience who didn't watch this. You can go backwards to TNM Coaching LinkedIn profile and see the LinkedIn live that Christopher and I have done this week. Um, when we talked about the power of questions. So why do we believe asking powerful questions? It's both crucial for good quality instructional design and then coaching. Yeah. That's we talked about earlier about um, the the Addy and structural design process. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about those asking questions, and e- you think about coaching. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, a lot of people are are recognized the uh, uh, International Coaching Federation, the ICF, the competencies, and there's different coaching processes and acronyms out there like TOMS and Grow and others that people who who coach are are familiar with, and it's really it's about being intentional and and getting deeper uh, on on the front end of of design, uh, of, of if you answer those questions on the back, hey, it'll make it easier on the back end for the coaches, right? It, it's right. kind of similar questions of mm-hmm. of understanding. Okay, who's our audience? What are the what are their needs? What are their challenges? What's you know what goal do you have? Okay, mm-hmm. uh, something uh, specific, measurable. What do you want to achieve from this? Uh, how how can we, what are our options? What can we go through to actually uh, make that happen? And and when you're learning something, okay, well, what insights did you have? What did you learn? Why is that important? Okay, yeah. what's next? So th- these are all very similar questions that are just asked in, in kind of two different roles. They could be the same person. Again, I've done design, delivery, and coaching. I've asked the same questions. Um, and so it, just ask the questions. And we talked about the other day of so what, now what? Um, and I can talk about further that if you'd like, but I, I want to kind of toss it back to you and see, you know, within that, there's so many questions. Are there any that, you know, you think are, are more important yeah. to really focus on in terms of design, delivery, and coaching? Yeah, absolutely. You know, for me, these this, uh, reflective questions, you know, getting people into the space exactly as you said, to reflect deeper and, and then keep on asking reflective questions. What did you learn from this content? How can you deepen your knowledge? What is the meaning behind this learning? How can you apply this into everyday work life? And what is the ongoing uh, growth and development as a result of this learning? I think that going through the layers of reflection uh, and really asking those powerful coaching questions can get people to surprise themselves. Yes. Not only with the content of the, the training program, but also with their inner wisdom. Because I think also a lot of people have certain knowledge, they have skills locked within themselves. So when we ask those powerful reflective questions, 
in coaching and the delivery, we can unlock it. So I always love to see that when people go, bing, you know, the magic, yeah. that they, they know, right? Well, and, and I want to jump in on that is, mm. you know, you surprise somebody, they, they have the bing, the aha moment. I think that's so important for ideally people have this within themselves, but sometimes in the moment they don't think to do it. And that's where, um, people, trainers and coaches can help is don't lose that moment. Don't let that moment in that person slip away where they think back like, oh, I had this great inspiration. I had this great thought again. So what now what? That's what we so said. What okay. What? In the yeah. end, you had this feeling and it was awesome. You had this thought and it was brilliant. But yeah. honestly, no offense, but you know, I'm kind of blunt and direct, like in the end, honestly. So what now what if you didn't actually do something with that? Okay. So in that moment, I think people who are kind of committed to lifelong learning need to train themselves to capture that. Maybe you're, you have on your phone, right? Just write, okay. So what now what? Okay. Why was that important? Why was that so inspirational? You know, what, what about it? Okay. And then, all right, what, what am I going to do differently? moving forward as a result of that and how, how am I going to hold myself accountable? Or, or maybe you have this moment and you don't, you don't have it all figured out in that moment. You're just inspired. Okay. So what additional resources can I seek out? What, what support systems, whether it's a content or, or a person, but mm -hmm. don't let that moment go because that's the spark of a transformational learning experience. So don't let that spark go out, you know, add to that and turn it into some fire. I love that. Don't let that spark go away. Turn it into fire. That's a good one to bookmark everybody. When you're listening to this, just going to rewind and listen to again. That was a very beautiful pro of wisdom. So as we're coming close to the end, I have the last two questions for you. One is being who you are and sitting where you are, how do you see the future of learning? You know, do you what is your take on digitalization of everything or, mm. you know, the AI coming in stronger and stronger within this field? Uh, what is something that you're anticipating or seeing and, and uh, perceiving? Yeah, that's a great one. And, and I think we have opportunities as, as people who are truly passionate about uh, learning and coaching. You know, I think over time, you know, just content has become a, a commodity. Okay, there's so much content out there in all the different, you know, media type formats, right? And I think with AI, especially because that's even more of a commodity. And then coaching could, there's a danger of it potentially becoming a commodity if AI is just, you know, asking questions. Okay, AI can ask questions, but it, it can't go deeper into, I don't think, facilitating transformation and connecting with people as humans and asking powerful questions, you know, at the appropriate time. Okay. So I think there is a great opportunity for the people who, who have this passion about transformational learning to really differentiate themselves from a lot of the commoditization that's out there in content and coaching and being intentional, asking these questions, really engaging with the learners, uh, and, and again, We've said it a million times at this point, facilitating uh, transformational learning experiences. I didn't say this in this um, podcast. It's about facilitating real world connection and reflection. If you put it all, if you distill this whole thing into one sentence, that's, that's probably the best way to do it. It's about facilitating real world connection and reflection. And mm -hmm. you, you, your job as a designer, as a trainer, as, as a coach, and then as a learner on your own, go through that process, make it real and what's next. Yeah. And ask powerful questions to go what's next. And with that in mind, you know, any specific call for action. So how would you love to leave audience with, you know, you have complete freedom to do whatever you want right now. What do you feel based on what we dis discussed so far today for learners? So let's say for the people who are listening to you and listening to me, and they're in the position of, of being an employee, being a leader, being a manager in the organization, thinking, okay, I really need to upskill, I need to learn. So what will be the call for action for learners from your point of view? 
And then what is the call for action for people who are coming into it from the learning and development perspective, HR managers, leaders, and L&D professionals? Yeah, I think for everybody, it's similar to what I said a minute ago. It's about being intentional, okay? Whether you're the learner, being intentional in your learning, not just going through the motions and checking the box and earning a badge or whatever. Being intentional in your learning and those people that are designing or delivering learning, being intentional and those who are coaching me in intentional. And we talked about what, what does that look like? We've already talked about it. But I think that's, you get intentional, facilitating real world connection and reflection. And, and that's it. And, and asking those questions on the back end, no matter what you do, you read an article, you watch, mm -hmm. you listen to a podcast, you watch a video, or you go through some type of formal program. Don't lose those learning moments. Ask mm -hmm. yourself, so what now what? What 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 am I gonna do? What did I learn here? Why is that important? And what am I gonna do? Who do I need to reach out to for support to truly be able to apply what I learned in a successful way, achieve the results I want to achieve? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love, you know, just from my coin before we wrap up that you introduced that notion of, of content being a commodity because we also need to be selective. There's a lot out there. Right now, we're producing and producing and producing. And if we're just consuming content without asking those two powerful questions, yes. then it becomes a clutter in our brain and it literally occupies our mind and takes space and we do nothing with it. So we have to let go of that eventually and ask those questions that are going to get us into the motion of creating results and meaningful learning experiences for us all. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining us today. I told you, everybody, this is going to be absolutely wonderful. More about Christopher is going to be referenced in this uh, podcast as well. If you want to engage with him through tnmcoaching.com or his own personal website, please reach out to him. He's a wonderful professional who is able to really enrich your learning experiences and get you to really transform by learning. So once again, Chris, thank you so much. And for everybody else, thank you so much for joining TNM Coaching Unplugged. We're going to be broadcasting throughout July and August as well. I will be on a short summer, summer break. But we have pre-recorded certain sessions for you. What's coming up? It's the AI and leadership, which is a wonderful uh, podcast that we have recorded with Judith Ebel, and she's going to be talking to you next week around how do we get leadership and AI uh, together in a meaningful, coherent state. And then, of course, there are a few more surprises for you coming up with DNM Coaching Channel. Once again, Chris, thank you so much for joining everybody else. Thank you so much for being with us. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, sir.